Have you thought about upgrading your shop air or running air throughout your garage? You may want to check out Rapid Air Products. This is the MaxLine 7500 kit from Rapid Air Products. Comes with three quarter inch air lines, kind of a malleable, uh, somewhat rigid air line, very strong. Uh, and it comes with all these different blocks or manifolds as well as fittings. Now it doesn't come with your couplers or your actual nipples, but as far as everything else, it's included in the kit. So it takes a lot of the thought out of building an airline system. As long as you know you need less than 100 feet, this system will probably do it. And it's gonna provide you with like three different drops, including like the dump valves, the quarter turn dump valves. Most all of it is either stainless or nickel or brass. So built really, really well. And also the airlines are not just HTPE. There's also a layer of aluminum in there as well. Let's get started. This is the MaxLine 7500 kit from Rapid Air. Now Rapid Air makes everything from this kit to smaller kits to larger kits to rigid pipe, you name it. Anything to do with compressed air line systems. Uh, they probably make it all the way into stainless steel for food grade stuff and power plants, all that type of stuff they handle. This is one of their more economical or value oriented kits. And really and truly, it's almost a joke to try to piece this together with other parts. If you want a really nice looking airline system and you want it done right and it's ready for air when you get done. Yes, you can do PVC and PEX and those sorts of things, which this is really uh, simulates PEX anyway. But anyway, we'll get into that here in one moment. Uh, you get everything in this kit. So we get all the fittings in here, even all the drops, things like that. And again, we'll go over all the details in one moment. And you get 100 foot or 100 feet of three quarter inch line set. Again, you can get smaller line sets if you want to, but this three quarter inch is probably gonna take care of about anybody's shop uh, in light duty vehicles. So we get this 100 foot roll of three quarter inch pecs. Uh, we also get these tools in here, but real quick, one of the things that comes with this, is this right here. Yes, it looks like a PVC cutter. And yes, it will cut this rapid air piping pretty easily. Once you get it started, it cuts rather nice. So really easy to cut that. Now, I did that to show you here. So basically with this tubing, we get a layer of HDPE on the outside, HDPE on the inside, and then a liner of aluminum sandwiched in between those two. So really strong piping so it's somewhat malleable so we can actually bend this and i'll show you here in one moment it's also going to hold to its shape and it's not going to burst this has a 200 psi rating so any of your line sets should be absolutely fine now hdpe is just high density polyethylene you'll see that in a lot of uh tubings even pexes things like that so a really good line set not quite as rigid as straight aluminum or extruded aluminum or uh, like copper piping, galvanized piping, that sort of thing. Uh, but it does have some structure to it and it's not just going to flop around. So we get 100 feet of that. And then we get enough hardware to create three different drops if we're going to create three different drops. In fact, we'll put a little system together here in one moment. Uh, we get a couple of three ways, so two different three ways, so we can pass the air through, have a drop come down. And you can bend this at a 90 if you want to. You can also get uh, hard 90s also if you want more of a 90 degree look um, rather than a you know, radius corner. You can definitely buy those extra, uh, but we also get these fittings here. It's going to go in these aluminum bodies. And we have a place on the back as well. So everywhere we want to put a drop, you could even have airlines coming through, uh, through the wall where these mount and it go in that way. But we also get the plugs for these as well. So you get a lot of the hardware, even these quarter inch ball valves. And by the way, you can see the nickel, stainless steel, aluminum, everything's built with. Looks like all stainless and brass quarter inch or quarter turn ball valves there. So great quality stuff in this kit. And like I said, we have enough for three of these drops like this. Now, whatever's exiting there, you're gonna have to provide for that. So 
whether you're going to put a quick coupler there, some type of coupler, or some type of valve, uh, some type of nipple, that's up to you. But as far as everything else right here, we have enough hardware to take care of that. We can get some extra O-rings. And those will go inside of here. So it's a real easy system to put together and really good quality stuff. Not only that, we also get a bunch of hangers to hang the pipe as well. Now connecting the pipe to these fittings is really easy. What we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is take this little tool that it comes with and this will actually do smaller piping and larger piping as well. So we take our pipe, push it on here, and so you're just going to give it a few turns. And you see the shavings there. And if you look on the inside of this pipe, you'll see a nice bevel on the inside. And then you'll take your fitting, remove the nut, slide it on the pipe, take the ring, slide it on the pipe, and then we're just going to push this onto here. So let it seat all the way at the bottom, slide that on, and then get that finger tight, and then you're going to take your wrench, crescent wrench, channel locks, whatever, and you're going to give that three quarters of a turn. So you can mark that with a marker if you want to. Come back later, give it three quarters of a turn or until it stops turning and you should be good and sealed. You want to reuse it, unscrew it, pull it back off, and now you're ready to go again. And we even have some extra O-rings in here if for some reason they're damaged when you pull those off. Okay, we're gonna build us a little line set here in a moment, but let's go ahead and get these manifolds ready. We'll go ahead and completely set one up and then we'll, uh, we'll get those going. So if you want a leak-proof air system, then you need to put a little time into it, but it doesn't take a lot and it doesn't take a lot of material, but I definitely recommend some Teflon tape or PTFE tape as well as some pipe thread sealer as well. So you're gonna use both of these to give you a nice leak proof system. We're gonna start out, we just need a couple of turns. A Couple of turns of Teflon tape should do the trick. That's my back plug that's gonna go back here. Then we'll do the ball valve. A Couple of turns on that. Airline fitting coming in. And since I'm not going to be using this port back here in the back, I'm not using a through wall system, I'm gonna go ahead and start that one. And then I'll take a little bit of my pipe sealant. And it doesn't take much of this, but it always kind of makes a little bit of a mess. You could probably use Teflon sealant as well. Go nice and snug with that. And you want to make sure you're not getting any inside your airline, or at least try not to. Seven eighths wrench. Use that nut on the bottom side. And that pipe sealant will act as a little bit of a lubricant for threading that in. So you don't have to go crazy on torquing that. You want to get it nice and snug. And then our ball valve. And that's going to thread on the bottom. 13 16 wrench. And you want to line that back up right there. And that's going to basically be your, your drain line. And then I'm going to put a coupler on here. So I've already got an adapter. I've already got a reducer. And a coupler. And just like that, we've got one of the manifolds done and ready for mounting. Now keep in mind, depending on how you're building your line set and where you're building it, you may have to wait to thread that in afterwards or something like that. But for the most part, you should be able to build uh, your drops, your manifolds before you run the line set and you can get these all ready and then run your line set. Okay, so let's cut some of this tubing. I know I need a 33 inch run and I need a 16 inch run and that's going to basically be at a 90. So 33 down, 16 across, 
So I know that will be plenty because really this will be radius, but I'm not even gonna worry about that. We can calculate all that if you want to. We can also do it the easy way. Cut 49 inches as long as you know you have plenty of line uh, or tubing and then let's go from there. So we'll cut 49 inches, then we'll measure and we'll measure where our radius starts. We'll use something to bend that radius and we're gonna show you a little trick with this. So we're gonna roll out our tubing, which if there's one complaint I've heard about this tubing, it's that it's a pain to get straight. Well, if you want really, really laser straight tubing, then buy the, the rigid tubing that Rapid Air sells as well. But there is a trick to actually getting this straight. Let's roll this out. But well, let's just make me a little mark on the table here at 49 inches. So I know this is at least 49 inches. Go ahead and cut that and you'll see it's nice and kind of not straight. Now you could just take this and you know, use a flat surface and work this if you want to. And that will work pretty well. You, know, you can work this out and spend a little time to do it, but I got a better trick. So just take you a two by four and a one inch spade bit or a one inch wood bit and drill a one inch hole all the way through here. One inch happens to be perfect for the outside diameter of this three quarter inch tubing. Obviously, if you got a different size, find the right wood bit and you can get this pretty straight just working this through. So getting that pretty straight on the first pass. Lay it down on your table. Tweak it a little bit, but this is just a really simple way to be able to get that straight pretty quick and to get it how you want it. So now that I've got that pretty straight, I know on one of those runs, I want it, and I'm gonna leave plenty, and uh, I know I need at least 13 inches to the start of the radius. And then from the other end, I need at least 33 inches to the start of the radius. Actually, it's 32, but I'm leaving enough to cut off. So now I'm going to take something round. You don't, you don't want it too small because you don't want to kink your pipe. And then if you want to, you can kind of mark the center here to give you a reference. Nine inches in between, so kind of there. And that's where you can... And you can use a bucket like this or anything else. Uh, you could also use... If you have a conduit bender, you could definitely use that to bend these as well. But we're just going to continue using our bucket here. So I don't quite have my 90 yet. I can either put it on the bucket or I can just kind of bird's eye it. And you see I still don't have any flat spots or kinks. So I think we're close enough until we get that on the wall and put it on our hangers. And lay it down, make sure you're nice and flat. And if you're not, go ahead and tweak it until you are. Now I already have my route mapped out here and drawn here, so. I'm gonna go ahead and mount the line set mount. I'm going to go ahead and mount the airline mounts. Now these mounts are pretty cool because if you wanted to run parallel line sets, you can actually connect these like that. So if you are going to do that, take note of which side you have where so that you can connect those. And now we'll just make sure that these are going to work. Yeah, that should be fine. Our 90 looks decent, our sweeping 90 looks pretty good. Looks like we're pretty straight on our runs, at least good enough for me. Again, if you want nicer stuff, then you can work a little longer or get the rigid stuff. Now, really the first one I wanna set up is a center section. And I'm gonna measure 
for my line up there, I know I need uh, 39 inches. Now that's from the top of my manifold uh, to the actual center of the line up there. So 39 inches is what we need. Now I know I want 39 inches, but I want 39 inches from the top of my manifold here, top of this aluminum block, uh, to the center of this T-joint or three-way. So I'm gonna put that there, put this here. Let's say, okay, 39. So now let me, to get a more exact measurement here, so that'll let me know how far my pipe goes up into there, which goes about midway into these threads here, or maybe even, yeah, about midway into the threads, maybe a little past. And so now I'm gonna get an accurate measurement of how long this pipe needs to be. Looks like to me, we need to be about 37 and three quarter inches. We're gonna roll out some more of our line set here. And by the way, if you just kind of hold it here and roll it out, that's probably the easiest way to do it. And again, I'll leave myself a little extra. Okay, now that I've got this piece pretty straight, I'm happy with it anyway. Uh, now we need to cut it down to 37 and three quarter. Now, if you use that two by four method and you're actually working it through that hole, sometimes this end will kind of get um, collapsed, if you will, or kind of shrunken where you're working it through. So you want to leave enough so that you can actually cut both ends off. So I'm just going to cut about a half inch off here. Now I know it's nice and square and nice and round. And same thing here. You can almost really see it right here where it's kind of got worked down. I'm sure you could expand that, but putting this tool in there, you'll have a lot of trouble pushing it in there. So I want 37 and three quarter. Now I'll take my T, put the nut and compression sleeve on there, push it on. We'll just leave that finger tight for right now. And now before we go, let me just check that measurement. And it looks like we're a little bit too long. It looks like we're 39 and a half. No problem, we can take care of that half inch. Slide that on. And now we're good. So since we know this is good, uh, we're gonna go ahead and tighten these down. Now you could definitely do this on the wall or wherever you're mounting it, may make it a little easier, but thought I'd give you a better shot uh, right here. Now you could take a marker and mark this, but I think you kind of understand what three quarters of a turn is. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm just gonna hold this inside nut here and take my channel locks a quarter turn half turn three quarter turn and we're done that should be nice and sealed all right so we're going to do our other radius we did one with the bucket uh, this time i've marked out i need at least 12 inches of straight uh, before my radius and then the radius and then about 28 inches of straight on the other end and this time this is a conduit bender here this is a three-quarter inch conduit bender it's a little thicker than this bender but will be okay since it's a softer pipe make sure you're on flat ground here and then you're just going to roll this up until you hit there Pick it up, roll it out, and that gives you a nice, smooth bend. So, if you know an electrician or you have a conduit bender, that'll work absolutely fine for doing radius on your pipe. All right, so I've got my mounts up. I've got the center section done. I'm just going to pop that in there. But before screwing the manifold to this wood here, let me go ahead and place this where it needs to go, but I'm going to drop it down just a touch. Then we'll take this one. Pop that into place, and then what we can do, use this as our reference on where we need to cut this, and so I'm going to say about right there. Now. 
Pop. And now we know the center one is done, so we can go ahead and mount this one. Now this one here, I want the manifold about right there, and so pipe needs to be about right there. Now here's the real question. When we hook up the air, are we gonna have any leaks? And typically you would have a regulator here, but in this case, we kind of bypass the regulator and we're just gonna hook up our air hose from our shop. No leaks. Well, we don't have the air on yet. Slide this forward. I hear no leaks at all. Air there. Air there. Air there. So no leaks at all. And that was our first go around. When you saw us hook the air up to it, that was the first time and zero leaks. We had no leaks in it, not anywhere at the couplers, not anywhere where we actually uh, screwed in the fittings. Um, so I highly recommend run a few wraps of Teflon tape around it. We use Blue Monster, but you can use any Teflon tape. And then we back that up. We use some of it with some uh, regular pipe thread sealant and others with the Teflon sealant. Both of them seem to work absolutely well. And that's going to ensure that you don't have any leaks and that compressor is not going to continue to run when you leave for the night. Now the price on this, we've seen it anywhere from $215 to $235 all in for the kit. That's not a bad price at all. In fact, you can find it uh, on the Rapid Air Products website. You can also find it on Amazon as well. So check it out. We'll have a link in the description. We really like the product. The biggest complaint we've seen from others is the fact of trying to get this straight. We gave you a couple of ideas on how to do that, as well as bending radiuses. You can use a conduit bender or you can use a bucket or a, a big weight for weight lifting. Whatever you want to do to put the radius you want to on there, and you can get these things straight. And, and again, and again, if you want something straighter than that, then buy their rigid piping system. They have those available as well, even up to stainless steel. And they're even getting into crimp fittings as well. Also, keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, well, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day. Keep smiling.